over-the-counter cash, which is an option within Rails where you can cache a number of objects belonging to a model. So let's first have a look at the application. A company has many users and a user belongs to a company. And here on the index page, I'm calling the company users.length to then get a count of all the employees. If I refresh this page, we can look on the right hand side to see what's happening on the SQL side. So even though we're not referencing any of the other fields of a user, it's still loading the entire record from the users table just to get the count of users. So this length is not very efficient. We can change this to company.users.size and if we refresh again, we can see what happens. So now it calls a query select count from users so this is going to be a lot more efficient and it'll take less time than the previous method. However, we can optimize this even further with the counter caching. And to do this is fairly simple. Within our user model where we have our belongs to company, we can simply just type in counter cache and then true. And you are able to override the column that's going to be used by default. So by default, it's going to look for a user's count integer attribute on the company model. However, you are able to override this by just passing in a symbol. So then I'll look for a user size integer attribute on the company model. However, for our purposes, I'm just going to leave this to true. So to add our column, we'll simply call Rails Generate Migration and then we'll give it a name. So I'm just using add counter cache to companies and then I'm passing in the attribute users count and I'm specifying that it's an integer. And before we migrate our database, I do want to make some changes in this migration file. So within the migration file, when we add the column, I want to give it a default value of zero. And then we also need to make sure because if we have any existing records with companies and users, then it's going to come out with the default as zero. So we need to be able to go ahead and update all of the existing companies and give a count of their users. So just adding a new line, we can just do company find each, which will basically loop through each one of the companies. And then we can call company.resetCounters, pass in the company ID, and then reference which association that we want to reset the counters for. All right, so now we can go ahead and migrate our database. And I'm tailing the development logs over to the right hand side. And then we can kind of see what's going on. So here we see that we added to the company's table the user count attribute. And then we looped through each one of the companies and we updated the user count with the count of each user. All right, so with our application running now, we can refresh the page, and then you'll see that it immediately goes down to one query, and we still get our count of our users. If we edit one of our users, so this record has 83 users, we can delete one, and then when we go back, we now see that it has 82 employees. So Rails automatically knows that we have a counter cache on our users. And even though we still have within our code company.users.size, it's still pulling from the counter cache column. However, if you do want to explicitly set this, you can call users count and this will do the exact same thing. And if the default Rails counter caching is not suited for you because you need some more flexible alternatives, then check out the counter culture gem. It supports additional features that the Rails standard counter cache doesn't. And the latest version of Counterculture has been tested with Rails 5.0 and 5.1. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.